Hello, it's Jenny, Vintage Soul Crafter. I thought we might not ever get this video started. You know, it seems in life like you figure one thing out and then something else goes wrong. And then you figure something else out and something else goes wrong. So I have a tripod now, but I have to figure out how to use it and I have to figure out lighting and all of that stuff. So hats off and a big bow to photographers and videographers everywhere for the work that you do. I tremendously respect you and your skill and your artistry because it is not easy and hopefully there will be enough light on this video for everyone to figure out what in the world I'm showing you and what in the world I'm talking about. Okay, well, as I had mentioned in a video, I don't know, a week, two weeks ago maybe, I was going to begin working on some altered baby books, repurposed uh, baby books. And so I figured what I would do is start out with um, kind of sharing my process, which is in and of itself a process for me because I have not ever altered or repurposed baby books before. I've only been collecting them and collecting them is pretty easy as many of you know. Um, collecting things is not difficult for us artisty, artistry type folks. So I, um, I just thought, sorry, I'm kind of scattered. I had all my thoughts together, but poof, just like that, they're gone. I thought that I would share with you kind of what my brain was doing today with all of this and where I'm going from this moment into the next moment and so forth. Okay, we'll just start right away with this stack of baby books, baby type items that I have. And what I've done so far is gone around my craft room and collected together things that I have seen baby items in, things that I thought could be worked for baby, used for baby items and would work for these books. I don't quite know how I'm gonna repurpose them yet, but we will get to that. We will work our way through it. Beginning with this adorable baby album, album, and I don't say it's adorable just because it's mine, but it is mine and it is adorable. However, that has nothing to do with me or a picture of myself or anything in here because there aren't, aren't, there aren't, there aren't any pictures of me in here. No, indeed, there aren't. Um, there aren't actually any pictures of me, but a lot of really cute vintage 1960s, because that's when I was born, baby cards, as well as baby book pages. And it's the art on these pages that I love. Again, I apologize if the lighting is so crappy that you cannot see these, but hopefully you can. And they're they're faded because I'm a girl, so it's pink, and they're kind of pink, and but they're just the most sweet, adorable. I tried turning the light off over me, but that just was not helpful at all. Then it looked like I was in a den with a flashlight. So like so many moms, because you're busy, whether it's your first child, your second, your third, or so on, and I happen to be the fourth and the, and the last, best in my opinion, but we won't go into that. Um, Baby, you know, when does a mom have time to fill one of these things out? When, you're, when your school starts the first day and so on, you're busy. As a mom, you're busy, so you don't have time to fill these out. So one of the things that I've been thinking about in creating these, these books, these baby books, is how do I make them simple and easy but effective for holding all of these sweet little bits of memorabilia without making them burdensome? Because I don't know how many times as a mom you go back and look at these, especially if you end up with a whole house full of kids. Um, you're like just happy to get them out of the house and moving on into adulthood, possibly, probably. But um, at some point in time, it is there's so much joy and pleasure in going back and looking at these books. I, I was getting kind of choked up earlier, but as you guys may know if you've watched my other family videos with the book I did for my mom, that kind of happens with me but you know some of these are from my my grandmother and and there's just sweet little notes in them so I want to create baby books that are effective useful collect the memories but aren't cumbersome and burdensome to a mom with loads of lists and so forth and so on if a mom wants to do that she certainly can 
Um, but the purpose of my books is to collect those memories and make them beautiful and um, and something that's that's simple enough for, for a mom to be able to do effectively without feeling weighed down. So this is one of the little things I collected. This is one, two, three picture book and it just has adorable, you know, three bears and so on. This is a pretty wicked old 1939 and that, so that's got pages in it. And again, this is really just me collecting all of the things. That's where I begin. And then my mind keeps me awake at night and early in the morning as I begin to think about now, how can I put these into a book? This is another one that I've collected uh, that never got filled out. Maybe this was, well, okay, it did. In 1924, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe, maybe not. I'm so sorry if this lighting is just awful. but. No pictures, I mean, presented to, and then, you know, maybe one or two pages filled out. So, forget-me-nots. But how can I incorporate these things into a book, but make it simple? Another one, adorable, baby's little diary. Maybe this was given, I don't know, it says, yeah, um, this is 1957, and I don't, uh, maybe it was given because it says natural National Research. Uh, research Bureau. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it was given at the hospital, you know, maybe they handed out little baby books or something. But mom gets home and she did manage to fill out some of the, the family tree. Don't you guys always wonder, I always wonder, what happened to these people? Where where are they? Here we have tucked into this into this little book, this, maybe it was the first day of school. Oh my gosh, on this day and all the year, I love you truly, mother dear. Where are these people? Oh, my heart, my spirit just cries out to them and hopes and prays and wishes good things for them. But back to the task at hand. It not fully filled out, so lots of useful pages. And again, the question, how do I repurpose these into books that are pretty and useful? And, or if it's for a boy, um, Mother and Sadie Campbell love them, and, and lots of just adorable, vintage pictures, once again, that are just too sweet for words. Another book. So, okay, I'm not going to go through all of these. This one looks has a lot of similar, probably the same uh, artist that did actually my baby book. So it probably is the round, around the same, just a different outside, same era. Another book. I have lots of books. No shortage of books. That's one of the boxes that they came in. Wrapping paper. Vintage wrapping paper. If you have never watched Rebookery, oh my gosh, I just love Gina. She she inspires me no end. She's constantly um, challenging and pressing and pushing the envelope. And for her viewers who are into arts and crafts and creating things to to be challenged, to uh, keep your mind open, to create and just allow that creativity to flow. So I love watching her. I love the stuff that she produces. It's totally my vibe, um, that vintage retro and color explosions on the page. And she's just not afraid to just go for it. So she has a serious fetish for vintage wrapping paper. And why not? I mean, look at this stuff. It's absolutely Precious. These are some of my Goodwill finds. Incorporating those into pages. Another baby book. Love this book. If you've never checked out The Art of Gloria Nixon, please do. This is um, this was a Goodwill find. I was thinking it was a Hallmark. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, lots of great, beautiful photos. This one has not, I don't think, been filled out at all. So, fantastic pages. Question, do I want to reuse and repurpose the the bindings, the, the covers for these, or do I want to just completely do something different? So that's a question. One of the other items that I've gathered up here is these magazines, these vintage magazines. If you follow me on Instagram, and you can, I'm now on uh, Instagram at Vintage Soul Crafter, so easy enough to find goes with the YouTube channel. Slowly getting there, folks, slowly getting there. But I just was going through these. I got these quite a while ago at our local um, Sacramento Antique Fair. And this one's 1955, 55, and 55 as well. Companion, McCall's, and again, Companion. And it has lots of vintage ads 
of course. I probably say vintage a lot because, well, that's just uh, who I am, vintage soul. My sister-in-law gave me a gift last year for Christmas that actually started all of this. Um, hi, Agnes, if you ever see this video, thank you again for my beautiful bracelet, and it said vintage soul on it, and she said, that's what you are. You are such a vintage soul, and I thought, you know what? I really am, because I make them vintage -y type Christmas gifts, and we all just totally love vintage, and anyway, I've always been in love with it, and um, with old stuff and antiques and all of that, and I, I thank my, my mom and my ancestors for that legacy, but great, ivory snow, so this this image right here could be a page that gets uh, repurposed into that. Um, let's see if I can just quickly find, oh, look at, cute. I mean, look at these jockey little underwear. I don't know that I would do that, but maybe in a boys I would. Oh, this one, beautiful, you know, stitch a pretty sack for baby. Um, yeah, there's there's just several. I mean, this little, this little boy, you know, he looks, child reborn about a little boy who could never grow up until love and something more came his way. Yeah, he looks sad. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I would use that, but it's a possibility. So, oh, this one. Love this one. New pink draft. It's new. It's pink. Makes brilliant white wonder soft suds that give hand care safety. I mean, you know, just adorable. So, these kinds of magazines I've gone through, even the cover of this is precious. Again, asking the question, want to incorporate these how do I incorporate these and how do I make the book useful you know for a birthday party a picture like this when the when the child sorry for the glare when the child gets older um, and so forth this one the sand pal set I don't know maybe I would sand pale set maybe I would use that for uh, for a ocean beachy kind of thing or something else I'm not really sure but Nonetheless, great images. How do I incorporate them and continue to make this a book that's easy to use? So gathering up, more gathering up of various different things is this little box of goodies. One of the things that I pulled out was um, these that are probably from one of the Smash books. And it's a calendar and it's a pocket. So I was thinking if I could create something like this on my computer, because I don't know how many of these I'm going to be able to find. Oh, you guys, the lighting. I hope it's not as bad for you as it, as it seems like it from me, but you get the message. It's a pocket. So what I think and what I love in books is when there's lots of pockets, then you can just stuff the stuff in there and you don't have to worry so much about recording. I mean, if you manage as a busy mom to get the month there and maybe a day on here, something that was lost first tooth, you might be able to write that and then you can make little baggies or here I found this we keep these little you know baggies you could put teeth in there I don't know about you guys but I found a, a little plastic tooth from the dentist that was full of baby's teeth and locks of hair locks of hair I think putting between uh, two sheets of um, plastic you know what's that that you know what that transparency stuff and I, I had some of it from the goodwill that I found and then sewing around it so it's a little bit more preserved if you keep locks of hair I never did keep locks of hair but I got some baby teeth so again how would it be simple for a mom who does want to keep those things to keep them and just tuck them away with a little note um, that's a couple things I found to incorporate. I did buy most things that I already have and have been picking up along the way. I did pick up a couple of super, I love these house mouse designs from Stampendous. And this is a baby bunny with mama bunny. And this is a baby bunny with a bottle. And I do have a mouse, but I didn't pull it out. And I'm not going to right now. These are just, oh my God, they're just the cutest thing ever. So those will be incorporated somehow. I also have kept these, which I got with something, I'm not sure, but these could be used on the pages in one manner, way, or another, maybe as a, maybe as a tuck spot. They have these, you know, double-sided sticky things, but um, somehow, because they're cute and they're kind of frilly and you could even punch holes further in there. I don't know, something, um, some way incorporating these. This little box has just all kinds of goodies in it. I got these butterflies. I think I got these at Michael's actually, but I didn't see any others there and I love them. So for a little girl's, not practical, but you know, for a decorative item, these are kind of this very, very light 
pink and they have this vellum and they have print. Oh, you're just not gonna be able to see them because of this lighting. I'll figure it out for the next time. Stay with me, folks. But these would be so pretty somehow incorporated. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I won't like them in there. Maybe it'll be too fussy. I'm not sure. With all those adorable pictures, you don't really need this kind of stuff that much, but still I want it to be pretty and, and sweet. And if it's for a girl to be feminine, and some of them I want them to not necessarily be for a boy or a girl so that they can be um, purchased by a mom who maybe isn't going to know or as a gift for a mom who isn't going to know what what um, her baby is, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. So human for sure. We always want as humans to have human babies. I think that is number one priority. I, I'm just saying. Um, but anyway, tags and all that. So, you know, I have a box and I'll keep going through things and collecting items that I want to use and want to incorporate it. But going back to the question, how? How am I going to put these together? And as the, the, the process of these videos goes on, I want you guys to be part of that. If you have comments, if you have thoughts, if you have suggestions, please leave them. I want to hear them. I want to, I want to know, you know, like I said, I'm learning this as I go along along with you guys maybe this I picked up at the Salvation Army it's uh, a table runner again I don't know because of my crappy lighting if you're gonna be able to get that but somehow incorporating this at the very least maybe uh, repurposing reusing this pretty crochet down on here but it has these really light flowers that have been uh, I guess that's probably embroidered. I don't think it's cruel, but I don't know enough about that. I know how to take it apart, but or maybe even using it as a whole, you know, if I if I am going to hold on to this, do I want to repurpose it? I'm not a huge fan of the puff of that puffy thing that they do with these baby books very much, but then I was thinking, well, could I take the puff out and maybe reuse just the cover? I'm not sure. Anyway, I don't know, maybe you know, maybe having that on and, and I don't know. Anyway, process, process, process. These are a couple of baby quilts that, oh, I, I hate to take them apart, but I'm going to for, because here's, here's kind of what I've been coming to. I have collected so many things for so many years and books, vintage books, and so on, and they just sit there, or they sit in someone's house, or they sit in Goodwill, and they sit on shelves, and they never get used. And what really, I mean, other than a little bit of enjoyment of seeing them and looking at them, what what purpose do they serve? What usefulness? How much joy can you get out of them when they're sitting in a trunk or a chest or what have you? I have a chest full of tablecloths. And yes, mom, if you watch this, I'm sorry. I'm going to start taking them apart and reusing them because honestly, I don't, I will never use tablecloths. I don't know if my kids would ever use tablecloths like these beautiful tablecloths, but books, books that we can open and flip through and touch and feel. I'm so tactile. That's one of the reasons I love these junk journals and these repurposed and altered books. And I think so many of us do is because we love that sound, that crinkle, not just the memories in the nostalgia of them, but the, the touch and the texture and, you know, um, so anyway, sorry, I digress. Uh, but this is a, this lady was a sewer, a quilter. I bought a bunch at this estate sale, a bunch of um, magazines. I mean, oh, and you guys, I got some deals. Oh my word, did I get some deals. Uh, I won't go into that right now. But um, she she did had a lot of needle craft magazines. So I, I just... I was a good estate sale girl and I just shoved all of those boxes over to the guy and said, how much do you want for these $5? Okay, sold. And they're, they're gems. They are beauties. And I will be using those and taking them apart. But you can look at, I mean, this, this quilt I got for $10. This is completely handmade quilt. I know because this woman had all of these, all of these books and magazines about quilting. I mean, just loads and loads. I didn't buy all of them, not to worry and cross stitching here and so and a cute little mouse here and over here there's uh, you know this little bear and and it just has some adorable adorable images on it not to mention this is all usable and is a baby going to use it probably not i 
and not as far as I'm concerned. I don't have any grandchildren. Um, I don't know if or when I will have grandchildren, but I can use it in a book that a baby or a human could, could enjoy and treasure, you know, with memories and treasures. So, and this again, this is another little quilt that this, this gal made, and it's got this beautiful little bit of tatteredness on the, on the edges of it that I'd love to use. And I, I want to take these squares out and use them to incorporate in these baby books somehow, or on the cover, or inside, or, you know, bits and pieces of them. And so, they're precious. There's a kitty and a puppy, and over here there's another little pink kitty that's upside down. Um... I'm not going to completely unfold it. This one's really light. You probably won't get an appreciation for this little puppy. But, and again, I'm not going to say it again about the lighting in here. But, you know. So, this was $5. And, I mean, it's just, it's just so sweet. So precious. So, yeah. So, that's, that's quite a bit of stuff. I have this, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to show you. I have this other <laughs> basket of books right here uh, it's got poo it's got um, you know golden books and things that I'll use pages out of those as well but that is the beginnings that is the beginnings of the baby book process so I hope you will stay tuned with me and come along on this crazy fun creative ride with me to see how we make these baby books Thanks. Bye.